Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome episode where I have got with me Fred Bird, the Leeds Battle Hardened Champion. Dude, how are you? I'm great, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and you? I, I'm good. Well, thank you. I think you're the first that's ever may have said that to me, which is a uh, first. Because <laughs> normally people have just some go, yeah, rude I'm fine. guests. Oh, no, 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 they're all good. They're all lovely. I never yeah. get asked how I am normally. But yeah, no, I'm doing great, thank you. I had I'm ProQuest season week two has now all just finished through. We've all uh, I've had my weekend of fun with it, and you've been you went all the way out to Leeds to play in i believe it's just under 200 player i think it was like 180 player mm. battle harden event and you're the and you are the winner dude how was that feeling when yay. i know yay <laughs> how how was that feeling winning the battle harden yeah it was very it was very nice uh felt <laughs> <Obviously>. quite... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think i think more than the sort of prizes it's that feeling of yeah i actually achieved achieve something no um, no honestly let's do it so, yeah a bit of background nice. about yourself then you've uh you you are a streamer well a, were a streamer or still or still a streamer of gwent still um but that was what tell us a bit about your background yeah so i streamed gwent the witcher card game yeah. and was sort of a pro player for that played a lot of tournaments in it um and now i'm doing marvel snap streaming and youtube and stuff like that so yeah. with flesh and blood on the side I, I really enjoy the flesh and blood actually. It's uh and the tournaments are you know, it feels very high skill uh ceiling and you can have a very high win rate in it. So Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. What brought you into the world of flesh and blood? How did you get to know it? Oh that's kind of a fun story. It was oh, actually that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh Flake, you know, the uh Oh I do, yeah, I know Flake. Canadian caster and uh, uh, he's a he's a big Gwen player like, as well. Yes, yeah, he used to cast all the Gwent tournaments. Yeah. So we're friends, and he came to sort of a Gwent meetup uh, somewhat recently, like last year. All right, cool. And just showed me the ropes, and I was <laughs> got pretty uh, pretty into it oh, uh, nice. very quickly. So, yeah, it was... That was, was, that, was, that, was your fab, that was your fab introduction? Yes, he's, he's converting the, the Gwent people. Oh, awesome! And so you, so you got to know it through Flake, and then um, what was your, like, sort of, like, how did you get in? So he he told you about it. So what was what was when you mm -hmm. then looked at it? What 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 brought you to going? You know what? I'm actually going to really jump into this. I'm going to go all the way to another country, <laughs> <laughs> spend loads of money on this really cool deck to play it. What was what was the selling point? Yeah, well, I mean, in Warsaw, which is where I live, there's a lot of very good flesh and blood players it's like yeah. a hot spot for <laughs> Poland's you know it's, uh, it. yeah yeah so there's a lot of armories a lot of tournaments uh it's kind of yeah i also have a couple of friends from gwent who are in warsaw playing flesh and blood so that's quite cool uh in fact Machier, which Machier yannick yeah you might know the name he's quite uh quite a high rank player so he plays a lot of flesh and blood and he was playing gwent so i know him from that and sort of felt quite easy actually to get into the game and then i don't know i just bought decks and stuff because i like i like card collecting it turns out and uh it's fun isn't it having yeah. like <laughs> some crazy good cards and you, you build your deck up and then yeah so old him is he like uh is so what made you decide you're going to play old him at the at the battle hard and was it down to the love of the hero or was it just because he was a good choice for the meta uh i'm mostly sort of choosing what to play based on how how good it is more than yeah <laughs> you know i'm one of the yeah. most competitive minded people so i've played a bit you know i started with briar actually oh yeah uh, it was my first sort of deck and then i switched to old him because it just felt like a deck that was a lot more consistent mm -hmm. and yeah you know with briar you're sort of hoping that you don't brick your hands you don't draw too many non-attacks all at the same time right that kind classic of thing. rune blade problems yeah yes 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 i'm sure you know with your <laughs> yeah with Viserai, with Viserai, right? yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah ultim feels a lot more consistent i think it's well positioned in the meta mm -hmm. i played it at world championship all right only fantastic. Lost, lost one game in constructed so it felt 
really solid to me, and uh, yeah, I think it's still really good. I like the deck. I didn't know you at Wales. I could have come and said hello, but I was there as well. Yeah. Oh. No, I think we were like on the same plane, even maybe. I think I Did saw you... you with some. I was there with my brother. Like we were just. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we probably really didn't notice. A small world. We're on the same plane. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's go. Cool. Let's go a little bit through your. Olden deck, just uh, this. I imagine there's a lot of this, and you, if you are um, a seasoned flesh and blood player, you're going to see a lot of these cards and be like, "Yes, I know what how mm-hmm. I know what most of these are." But you know, if some people are new that are going to be jumping in, um, seeing this uh, outside. Outside, this is going to be coming out real soon, so that's going to be a lot of people going to be wanting to jump in. So, I, I it'll be really cool to sort of get your thoughts on uh, some of your um, uh, choices on some of the cards. Um, the, the you've got some spicy ones one that there's one or two i looked at and was like okie dokie i i would love to hear why why this card's in here and i will just point out there is this war imperial war horn and i imagine i imagine that's going to be yeah. really, my head tells me it's probably iceland of our lady so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um hold in what's so with the with the cards that you picked here, it seems a very, it seems like a very aggressive olden deck uh not if, if, if that's fair to say yeah, yeah, it's not the you know that sort of fatigue game plan with Oasis Respite and stuff like that. It's definitely a more, you know, they hit you, you throw something back that's bigger and, and nastier, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so I should I should say like I don't want to uh, take full credit for the deck because right. some of these, like the idea for the Warhorn. Um, oh God, I don't even know my. So I have a I have a practice group sort of right. from Germany. With a bunch of German players. Uh, oh, lovely. Like Ili- Ilias Karamanis is one of them. I don't know if. You know uh, name, but... Yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. That, that won't ring a bell, but I can imagine some, somewhere along the line. Yeah, so, go, so... Hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, so that group, we sort of had this deck, like a similar deck to this for the World Championship. So, you know, I can't take full credit for uh, it's... sort of the, the shell of the deck. Um, yeah. And the Warhorn was someone else's concept uh i can't remember their name unfortunately Hi. i know their first name is jean i think jean or jean paul maybe but anyway yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's a bit embarrassing but no, uh, no no don't worry it's all good so i can yeah, see here yeah. that you've got your command and conquers e-strikes oak and old mm-hmm. um you've got your red glacial footsteps and red thunderquake spinal crushes that to me is is that something that you would stick into most of the into your game plan or is there, or or are they kind of interchangeable depending on who you're up against? Yeah, so I th- I think there's different ways that people do old him. Some people mm-hmm. are running endless winters and choke slams and all these kind of uh, four cost attacks, which are you know you can uh, pair them with pummels. Yeah, you, know, you have two blues, big attack plus pummel, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, for me, I think what's really broken about old him is being able to use tunic. Right. with pummel <laughs> yes so yes you can you know you don't have to use an extra card to get the pummel value uh, yeah. so for me being able to tunic and then pummel with a command and conquer or spinal is like sort of the whole premise of the deck you just like wait and defend and then when you have the pummel plus uh spinal or cnc or whatever then you can hit them back for a big a big amount so yeah. that's kind of the the concept there and yeah Cool. So a lot. So with the um, the uh, the blues, I can see that that's. I'll be honest. It does see it feel a little bit um, as you would expect. You got the a good number of ice cards that um, are classic into his deck, um, as well as the earth cards as well. With the the only ones that I sort of pointed out here and thought that's really interesting. Like I suppose really some for some people that might go, oh, yeah, no, I expect to see that. The so tomorrow hypothermia and i am looking at this stamp authority here going <laughs> i haven't seen you in a guardian deck yeah. in a long time but we'll start so the hypothermia and the so tomorrow what was your mm-hmm. what what would you pick of them of just having one copy of so we've got imposing visage in the deck which uh, yeah is basically a tutor for uh for auras right yes so you can play I'm not sure. oh there you are You're literally right in the middle there you are right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure every old is running this but i think it's like one of the best blues for old because you can pull channel lake yeah if you need it so against fi and you know decks that really 
trying to well particularly against fire yeah. <laughs> is the main one you can grab that lake you'll never you have a you have three extra cards in your deck essentially that are disrupting the opponent so that's really helpful and then hypothermia is like another uh just extra you can pay three mana with imposing and have a hypothermia with go again yeah that's so that's, that's really good. really good especially against things like briar uh maybe viserai that I know. You know, really need the I know, I'm sick <laughs> need the go. I'm sick I'm of sure you. Firm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah, so, so tomorrow though. That's so tomorrow. It's just just sort of an Earth card, and you can play it in the mirror. You know, when the matchup's super grindy mm. at the end of the game, it just it basically puts another three block card into your deck. Yeah, uh, which helps you win the fatigue mill war i guess you could say yeah so it's sort of just yeah an earth card that you can earth react with awesome. in other matchups awesome now the stamp authority stamp authority <laughs> kind of it's a bit like the hypothermia but it's just sort of a blue three block so most of the time you're throwing it away yeah on turn one if you draw into imposing visage or stamp authority yeah and you're going first then you can maybe play it and you get an extra card for the next turn so it's, it's like a little kind of, it's kind of like a bravo a bravo it's like a fake bravo move when, when they go oh we're <laughs> gonna go and post some visage and find showtime to yes, then get yes the, exactly to get the card draw find the card you want put it into arsenal and card draw whereas this one is mm -hmm, just like mm -hmm. bam you know i've got plus one intellect next turn yes yeah but yeah it's only really good for turn one otherwise yeah. you're so <laughs> wasting all your mana yeah and or... that's it turn so yeah no no that's that's really that's really really cool that is really cool now um i do want to just lean over over to this imperial warhorn here what's mm -hmm. uh what's the uh, my you don't mind it can i give you my guess yeah yeah no try sure. slander yeah yeah it's <laughs> a pretty reasonable it's guess to, yeah to take out the um to take out chile is it is it all i i'm trying to think i'm trying to, to be honest i've i saw this card once <laughs> It's to take out their chilling ice vein and a frost X. Is that yes? Yeah, the... insidious chill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, insidious well, chill. Yeah. Them. Usually they're going to have other items and stuff on the board, right? They play like the energy potions and uh, amulet of ices as well. In, yeah. In, against old him, so yeah, you kind of just get a random item from them and the frost X on your side. So it's yeah. Or yeah, hits, so... hits them for double. It's also it's also quite good against dash. Oh, okay. Just dash yeah. against Altin, they'll play like all the items. They'll play the pistol stuff. Yeah. So the plasma purifier and the induction chamber, those cards. And then if you can knock one of those out, it helps you uh, quite greatly to win that matchup. That's really cool, man. I love I love seeing cards that um, when you, you kind of look at it and you think, oh man, that's when we all well, I don't know. I initially looked at it and went, that's cool, pretty niche, but it's pretty cool. But then it actually mm -hmm. turns out that nicheness. It's kind of yes. important in meta because they they actually just go yeah you know you know this scenario you're in <laughs> that this sucks for you <laughs> this is actually a pretty good answer to deal with some of your bad matchups so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and is there a way it's there's no way of recurring this back in is there there's no well you can you can play remembrance oh, yeah, and in fact the the practice group I was in there quite interested in doing that but I, I tried it a lot i tested it and uh it felt a bit too slow right if you yeah. play remembrance then you you have to play a horn and then you have to trigger the horn that's already two turns of yours gone and wow. then you have to find remembrance and shuffle it back and then draw it again and then play it again like it's it's extremely slow and not really good for you know you're going to tie games with the time no uh, I, I agree i think but i think if you manage so is it one of those cards that if you um you put you just put the one copy in. Is it one of is is it quite awkward to play though when you've got it? Do you sometimes see it go? Mm -hmm. Okay, what am I doing with you? Yeah, I'm still quite unsure if the card is even good. To be honest, I mean, I did well with it, but mm. I only really played Icelander once or twice at the uh, Battle Harden. So yeah, you have to. I think you have to time it against Icelander for when they attack you. So yeah. they're going to do like a red attack, and then you block them out with your hand, right? And then you play the horn so that you're not like wasting any cards. Yeah. Because if if they don't do anything on their turn or they play like an aura, and then you try to play the horn, you're gonna have like three cards left over that you can't use or whatever, right? So it's it can be a bit awkward, and I think a good Icelander can often punish it. They can also even play Channel Lake yeah. from their arsenal when you trigger it, which is quite 
<laughs> right. annoying, right? Because they yeah. can just get rid of the leak and it's not too bad for them. So no, yeah, that's that's so this. Yeah. It's, 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 it seems like it's um, a lot of timing issues. The source it's like yeah, I can imagine yeah. you can play some Icelander games where oh, no, I think you could see it because they do they they do go on, um, but there could be a horrible world where actually like oh man, it it's, it's, it's come around at kind of like a bit of an, an opportunity. But it's really cool mm-hmm. to see. I love the fact that you put it in, and did, mm-hmm. when you played it over at the Battle Harden, did you use it? Yes, yeah, it was really, really good there because, well, <laughs> in one of the games in the final of the Battle Harden, I actually drew it turn one. <laughs> oh, and when you draw it turn one going first, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's that pretty matchup. good. That's so, pretty, that is pretty good. Yeah, so I think it's a bit of a high rolly card ultimately. Like, you need yeah. to draw it before they do all of their stuff otherwise you know if you're drawing it too late in the game it's kind of a bit rubbish but awesome man yeah so um just wanted to do to sort of run down really a little bit about your journey through the battle hard and stuff now now that we know the deck we now know what sort of style of deck it is um mm-hmm. to go if it's okay just to go through your journey of if, if, if you do you remember all that if you remember all the heroes that you played up against <laughs> roughly not the players but uh yeah, the other yeah. Heroes. Okay, cool. Um, How many rounds was, was there, actually? Was there quite like I th- nine? I, I, I think it was like 11 in total, counting the... Nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 11 it was, games. Like, it was a lot, <laughs> counting the top eight, yeah. So from, um, from what you can remember, um, how it, mm-hmm. like from round one going forward? Yeah, so in total, I, well, I lost one game in the whole event. That's which all was you were actually... allowed. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to this basically yeah yeah which was kano i lost to kano actually what okay um, was that round yeah. one or was that just somewhere in the middle no no that was in the middle he was like i think we were four and oh or three and oh at that point so oh, he was okay. doing pretty well uh i can't remember the name of the player but uh, i think he's quite a good prolific kano <laughs> expert he basically that game i just sat there for like half an hour while he was doing maths oh wow and i was like okay am i dead <laughs> and i was dead so. oh. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> you just look, you're like sitting there for ages and he's in that tank yeah, and he so... goes i've got it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks>. yeah, so, <laughs> so that was fun um but no i played so this deck's not very good against fi actually oh for an ultim deck like ultim is typically good against fi right yeah, but because I don't have a lot of on-hit cards like Crush the Weak or Choke Slam or Endless Winter, those cards are good against Fi because you can yeah. slow them down by hitting them back like very hard. Whereas here, I'm sort of just like you have to be more defensive and hope they don't set up a really big turn or that you can disrupt them yeah. at a good moment, that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> did play against a few Fies and it went right. fine. Oh, okay, well that's good. I was so... going to say like um, I thought Fi was a pretty um popular hero of the day yes yeah my thinking was that i mean this deck can definitely beat fi if they're if they don't play perfectly like you should be favored Mm. but if they do play perfectly then it's a bit more iffy if you know it's like maybe you're slightly favored but it's it can go either way kind of a thing yeah um and yeah so the fi was okay in the end yeah what else Um, who else did you play up against Played all sorts of stuff actually. There's some Arachne in there, which <laughs> Okay. I mean you're happy to see Arachne as old him because you you know, you're yeah. a very tanky guy, you yeah. earth react the the annoying stuff, you defense reaction on the Yeah. Uh, all oh, their yeah. stuff. I so, can imagine that yeah. is just a complete nightmare. Did you No no the, the opposite. It's, it's well f- no, nightmare for Arachne. That's what I mean. It's a nightmare <laughs> for them. Like they're just yeah, yes, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about any dashes, any um rune blades? No dashes. Oh, that's, that's uh, right. No, no rune blades really. I played played rune blade in the pro quest. Okay. Um, it was a lot of fi. I played a lot of old him mirrors actually. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of slow, just hammer, hammer, hammer. Uh, there was some bravo. There was some. Um, I played a bolton as well actually. Oh, did you? Uh, that game was quite close. You know, they had a. They they were playing the combo oh, version. Of course they, they were. Up, <laughs> they set up the Uber combo of Doom, but yeah. I was just able to sort of mess up their arsenal every turn, or oh, good. play a lake or whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, and eventually yeah. they just that's that's the there, trick, so. isn't it? Because if you if you just slam down like just the lake or just something that's going to present mm, just mm-hmm. uh, some arsenal threat, it just takes the whole turn off, and they go, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm, really, mm-hmm. I just block up and 
go back up again and you're like okay and now like and you're like, okay i guess i can't do yeah. it now then so, okay and then <laughs> you know it, it's just in the end you're just whittling their health down to a point mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. But did he did he manage to pull the combo off no no i managed to oh, get him but he had like 12 cards or something in the soul and uh, oh that doesn't matter yeah. that, that's that, yeah. that, that doesn't matter as long as he doesn't get to I use them so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. but hypothermia was really good there actually that was i of, bet uh, <laughs> yeah that would have been be happy to have nightmare. that card um, what yeah. about um, did you take up? You took you obviously took on some Icelander on the way as well. Yeah, yeah. I think well, I think there was only one Icelander in the final. I can't try to remember what I played it. I think it was a lot of Odin actually. You, you just realised like, what's all these people? It's just Odin, just battering guys. Fire and Odin, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, two or two or three Fies, three or four Odins, I think. Oh, okay. Icelander, Kano, yeah. So, and directly so what was your thoughts of seeing the top eight and seeing the hero breakdown of i think it was like mm. what five old him and three icelander what was mm-hmm, was that mm-hmm. surpri- was did that surprise you yeah kind of i would have probably expected one or two more fives yeah in there, yeah yeah because that seems to be the other very decent deck you know if i can just win against icelander and old him even when it shouldn't be able to yeah um but other than that, not too surprising. I think Old Him and Iceland are really, really strong. They're yeah. sort of the most consistent decks because you have so many blues in your deck that you, you know, with other decks, if you, there's a lot of turns where you can just draw poorly and lose a load of value as a result. So. Mm. It's, it's, it's starting to become a bit of a trend now, isn't it? That the, it's having, having incredibly useful blue cards that have a lot of uh, value on them, um, you know, <laughs> when it comes to guardians and icelanders it's actually becoming a very popular trend so you get yes, you, yeah. you get into the final now you're smashing through you get right over to the final and then then win it with this it must have been like oh, like amazing just to get over the line mm-hmm. with all this yeah no it's a it's a nice feeling i really yeah, i've played a lot of tournaments before so i'm not sort of a stranger to the the top eight situation but it's it's very it's just feels uh, like a real achievement when you uh when you get that you do get the, the w yeah 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 absolutely and then day two pro quest how did that go same deck yeah no, it deck? was yes i just went with the same deck i actually lost to rob catton on yeah. icelander all right so i'm sure you know that name he, i sure uh, do yeah <laughs> he was top eight i believe in the in worlds we, we call him the we call him the uh the side quest uh master because uh yeah, yeah. He, for some reason, he goes to a side of it he just crushes it for some uh-huh, reason uh-huh. so yeah so he again I, I saw he did pretty well so you lost to him and mm-hmm, who mm-hmm. else did was it kind of and... over a rougher day mm, it wasn't so bad but i did lose to the prism the fake prism deck scott scott mines had yeah um, yeah he got me with that. It was quite a close game, but yeah, I, w- I wasn't really expecting, you know, I'd never seen that deck before. That was the first time I sort of, because of course he brought it to the tournament for the first time there. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty painful, but yeah, lost two in the end. So I was like just shy of the the top eight. You had to only lose one game really to. And I, it's, it's, it's a shame when you've got just a one day event, when you've got like over a hundred and. 70 oh, yeah. odd players you just like yeah. all right everyone else has lost round one it's just like wow yep go next yeah <laughs> you're off <laughs> well um fred dude thank you so much for giving me a bit of your time we've we've obviously mm-hmm. uh it's, it is one of those old decks that have had um you know plenty of look at but it's it's been awesome to just sort of catch up with yourself and to just briefly just go through all this and I just want to say congratulations. Thank you so much for coming Thank over you. to Battle Hard to the Battle Hardening Leeds, completely just wiping all these UK players. I know you're from the UK, but we yeah. wiping out all these UK players, showing you that Gwent the Gwent ma- pe- uh, players are really, you know, the champions and then taking that trophy all the way back to Poland. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, thank you so much, dude. Um, yeah, and uh, if you if you have if you want to plug a bit of your own uh, stream as well, I'll put I'll chuck a link down below. So um, yeah, follow the link if you want to. If you're also into Marvel Snap, and do you still do Gwent as well? Are you still plugging away at that? Ah, uh, not really. Uh, not so much. These Marvel. Days. <laughs> well, if you, Marvel you, Snap is the future, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you? Play, would you do any more street? Would you do any streaming for Flesh and Blood? 
Where you tell us? Uh, about? Possibly. I'll probably make a video or two about just some kind of like overview of the game type thing. Yeah. Try to interest some new players, but uh, yeah, there's not really a huge amount of interest I feel for the streams and stuff. So no, that's fair. I've tried it. Well, um, I'll put I'll chuck some links down below. Go check them out, and uh, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank you as well.